This is Top 30. Coming up, the FTC has issued a warning about debit card hackers at gas pumps. Brad and Angelina's divorce is getting messy. And one of these pictures is Paddington the bear, the other is just an adorable dog. Can you tell the difference? Welcome to the show, I'm Kristen Smith, and here are 30 things you need to know today. To combat America's obesity epidemic, the FDA now mandates chain restaurants display calorie counts. But does that help? According to a working paper out of Cornell, menu labels do help diners lose weight, just slowly, about one pound over three years. Researchers tracked some 5,000 diners at two sit-down restaurants. Some diners were randomly shown calorie counts, others were not. On average, menu labels decreased the amount ordered by 44.9 calories per meal, the equivalent of a small orange. These calories mostly came from appetizers and entrees. By the time dessert rolled around, diners dropped the healthy act and took in their normal amount. Drink consumption was another story. Displaying calories made people nearly 8% more likely to order one. These findings may be conservative, though, as researchers tracked what diners ordered, not what they ultimately ate. The Federal Trade Commission is warning people to beware of card skimmers when using credit and debit cards at the gas pump. The illegal card readers allow criminals to obtain personal information from the magnetic strip. Here's a simple way to help protect your account from skimmers. If you're using a debit card, run it as credit instead to keep your PIN number safe. And Ruby Rose has been cast in the historic role as Batwoman, the first openly gay superhero character to headline a TV series. Rose took to Instagram calling the role a childhood dream. She added, this is something I would have died to have seen on TV when I was a young member of the LGBT community who never felt represented on TV and felt alone and different. And look at this real life Paddington bear, except it's not a bear at all. That's Birdie, a five-year-old Pomeranian. It's like seeing double. Birdie's owner posted the adorable photo on social media and it already has more than 60,000 likes. Let's go to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange now for our Fox Business Minute with Nicole Petalides. Nicole, Disney is trying to help parents get their kids to sleep. That's right, Kristen. For a limited time, Disney will have a hotline to help parents with fussy sleepers. The service will let kids hear from Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and others. Get this. It was created after 77% of parents admitted struggles with getting their kids to bed. The controversial Seattle soda tax brought in more than $10 million after going into effect in January. That's well above initial estimates. One study has found that the soda tax has led to kids and adults to drink more water. Sales of Gillette are down because men just aren't shaving as much. Research found that many men want a more laid back look and think facial hair is popular, authentic and attractive. <laughs> but that's not the only unusual hair trend for men. Oh, yes, an online store is selling clip-on man buns. Just think of it as extensions for men. They come in blonde, black, brown, and cost about eight bucks each. Well, we'll see if they catch on. Thanks, Nicole. Big changes are coming to the Oscars, but not everyone's happy about them. In a letter to its members, the Academy's Board of Directors announced three major changes to the Oscars telecast, largely in an attempt to boost ratings in the wake of declining viewership. The biggest change is the addition of a brand new category called Outstanding Achievement in Popular Film. The Academy said eligibility requirements and other details will be announced at a later time. But critics say the new category, which they're already calling the Popcorn Oscar, cheapens the prestige of the awards. The Academy also announced it will shorten the broadcast from three and a half hours to three. To save time, certain categories will be presented during commercial breaks, meaning many technical awards will not get their primetime moment on national television. This has sparked outrage from many film craftspeople who make up a large percentage of the Academy's membership. The least controversial change is moving up the date of the 2020 Oscars to earlier in February, which is meant to increase the Oscars' relevance during award season. Only time will tell if the changes lead to that ratings bump they're hoping for. Top 30, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to Top 30. In the United States, African-American women are four times more likely than Caucasian women to die of causes related to childbirth. Recently, both Beyonce and Serena Williams have spoken out about potentially fatal complications. Joining us now to talk about this is Dr. Suzanne gilbert Lenz. Doctor, thank you for being here. Yeah. These numbers are astounding. Yeah, it's horrific. How do we explain these? You know, the reality is that we are trying to find out why this is happening. And I think the important thing is that attention has now been shined on this really awful problem. It is not related to socioeconomic status. And I think the fact that Serena Williams and Beyonce have had issues really highlights that. What happened with Serena is that she had a post-operative complication of blood clots in her lungs, extremely dangerous. With Beyonce, you know, she actually had one of the most common complications that black women have, which is high blood pressure during the end of her pregnancy. Yeah, and as a woman of color myself, as a mother, you know, myself, I kind of freak out when I see these high numbers. I understand New York City is doing something to target this problem. New York City has committed almost $13 million to study the problem and to correct the problem. And we're acknowledging it. We're working on training people better. We're working on data collection so we understand what is exactly going on so that we can fix it. Yeah. Because all women deserve the same excellent standard of care in this country. Valuable information, doctor. Thank you for being here. All right, what's more important, a morning coffee or saving for retirement? For roughly a quarter of millennials, it's the coffee. That's one revealing stat in a new LEND-EDU survey of some thousand adults ages 22 to 37 that breaks down the generation's monthly expenses. Despite stereotypes, the average millennial is saving, putting away about $480 each month. That total could be higher if not for younger millennials just out of college who can't set as much aside. So where else are millennials spending their money every month? $18 goes to streaming services like Netflix, $23 to the gym, $38 is spent on coffee, and slightly more $39 on marijuana. $75 went to alcohol and $82 to clothes. Most spending was on food, with $163 going to restaurants and $281 to groceries. With so much spent elsewhere, 37% of millennials admit they don't set anything aside for retirement. And now to Brody Brown in New York City with our Us Weekly headlines. Brody, I hear you have some Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt news for us. That's right, Kristen. Brad and Angelina's ugly divorce continues to drag out. First, Angelina's side filed documents asking a judge to dissolve the couple's marriage and address the fact that Brad had not paid meaningful child support. Brad's team quickly fired back, insisting the actor had given Angelina more than $9 million to house and support their six children. In happier news, Carrie Underwood revealed that she's expecting again. Yay! Mike and Isaiah and I are absolutely over the moon and excited to be um, adding another little fish to our pond. You know, she had a bit of a rough year, so I'm happy to hear there's some good news for their family. Okay, now what's this about Amanda Bynes making a comeback? Yes, we spoke exclusively with Amanda Bynes for our new issue this week. During her time out of the public eye, we learned that Amanda has been hard at work. She's preparing to graduate from fashion school this fall and launch her own fashion line next year. Plus, we confirmed that she is planning a return to TV later this year, which is exciting news for everyone that has been rooting for her comeback. Well, I truly hope it works out for her. Brody, thanks for the scoop, and we'll see you next week. More Top 30 after this. Welcome back. Dentists are pushing back on a new oral hygiene trend, brushing your teeth with toothpaste that doesn't contain fluoride. Many toothpastes that build themselves as natural and organic boast that they're fluoride free. But dentists argue there's no evidence that shows brushing your teeth without fluoride is effective against tooth decay. Instead, they say fluoride is the key ingredient in your toothpaste that fights against cavities. So they stress if your toothpaste doesn't have fluoride in it, brushing your teeth won't do very much. Fluoride is a mineral that's naturally found in water and food, and it helps prevent enamel decay. But some people have come to believe that fluoride is bad for your health, despite the fact that the CDC and the American Dental Association say it's perfectly safe. British dentist Damien Walmsley told the AP, it's really important to debunk this idea that brushing your teeth stops decay. You need to have the fluoride. So next time you're buying toothpaste, you might not want to skip the fluoride. Your teeth and your dentist will thank you. Well, the mayor of Philadelphia turned 60 years old this week, and he picked a pretty funny way to celebrate. Mike Jarek from Fox 29 in Philly joins us now to talk about it. Hi, Mike. Kristen, our mayor's name is Jim Kenney, and to celebrate his birthday, he went to his Twitter account 
and read some recent tweets. Let me just say they weren't all happy. Oh yeah, that Philly mayor is still trash. Well, one man's trash is another man's dumpster pool, even though they're not licensed. At Philly Mayor, when you look in the mirror, do you see a pandering fool? <laughs> oh, I see a 60-year-old man. I wish it wasn't the case. Yeah, mean tweets, and apparently, he says, he gets a lot of mean tweets. Kristen, I bet you never get mean tweets, do you? You know, you can't make everybody happy. Thanks, Mike. Music is proven to activate pleasure centers in the brain and decrease stress, which is why we have today's top 30 steel Metallics Bluetooth headphones at a special 68% discount. These sleek Bluetooth headphones allow you to wirelessly stream music from your phone, computer, and TV. There's also a built-in microphone for hands-free calls. It has an adjustable and padded headband so you can listen comfortably for hours on end. Each charge lasts six hours, or you can use the aux cable for unlimited playtime. They come in black, white, and my favorite, rose gold. The Metallics Bluetooth headphones retail for $60, but today you can buy them for just 19 bucks. That's a 68% discount. And you can get these right now at MorningSave.com while they last. Top 30, we'll be right back. In today's hometown stories from Fox 4 Dallas, 25-year-old Aiden Young was born in South Korea. He came to the U.S. three years ago on a student visa, and he could barely speak English. Now Aiden volunteers at the Dallas Public Library, teaching English to other immigrants to help them gain confidence in their new country. I know the struggles of them, so I really wanted to help them. When he's not volunteering at the library, Aiden takes classes at the University of North Texas in human rights and international studies. In our second story from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, composer and playwright Tom Savick has been writing music since he was just seven years old. Now 66, Tom has had several of his plays produced around the country. But thanks to the Act Two Artist Grant, Tom has the chance to challenge himself in a new way. The grant awarded him $2,000 to create a piece of music inspired by the theme of aging. And Tom decided to compose a string quartet that will explore the different stages of dementia. And in our final story from Fox 10 Phoenix, the Arizona Animal Welfare League is overflowing with kittens who need to be adopted. And one animal shelter in Scottsdale came up with a unique way to find them homes. This is a kitten yoga class where you get to interact with cats while doing yoga. And so far, it's been a big hit. People are so excited to do this. We've sold out every Every kitten yoga event we've held for the last two years within a couple days. And nothing helps you find your inner peace more than cuddling with an adorable kitten. Welcome back. Whether it's decluttering your kid's room, reclaiming space on your countertops, or squeezing in a home gym with only inches to spare, Steve Noviello from Fox 4 Dallas has the products that come with a compact design. Hi, Steve. Hey, Kristen. It's all about space saving. All of these products designed to do at least two different tasks. Starting with this right here from Mimish, it's a bean bag, but it's also storage underneath. So any type of uh, stuff, toys, clothes, uh, whatever you've got, you can store under. And the nice thing is they don't have to be soft goods. There's so much support in here that what's underneath won't get crushed. You're going to pay about 60 bucks for these. Moving on to this, this is from Dr. Save. It's their travel vacuum kit. Now we've seen this technology in a much larger format. You have to lug out the vacuum, but take a look at how small this vacuum is. You just pop it here on the bag, push the button, and it reduces the size of soft goods up to 70%. And finally, if you are tired of that treadmill that really has become more of a drying rack for sweaters, take a look at Treadly. This guy is about three and a half inches is thick, uh, great digital readout here, and really stores anywhere. So this is about uh, about 55 pounds. The nice thing about it is it uses infrared technology. So depending on where you're standing on the treadmill, it knows to accelerate, decelerate, or even stay consistent. This one's going to set you back about $6.99. All great ways to save space. Thanks, Steve. A security flaw could have put the medical records of over 90 million people at risk. Open EMR is the most popular program in the world for managing medical records. It's used by doctor's offices and hospitals to handle patient information, billing, and appointments. 
But the BBC reports researchers at a third-party security firm called Project Insecurity found the software had over 20 security bugs. Each of those bugs acted like a doorway that would let any potential hackers into the system and access sensitive information on over 90 million patients. Project Insecurity approached Open EMR with its findings. The company said it was thankful and that the Open EMR community takes security seriously and consider this vulnerability report high priority. The developers came up with security fixes for the issues. Medical offices that use the software are being told to update it now. Well, fall is coming up fast, which means fans of one sugary Starbucks drink have a burning question. Online rumors have already begun about when the pumpkin spice latte will come back to the menu. Fall is the coffee chain's busiest time of year, thanks in part to the handcrafted concoction. So to promote the return of pumpkin spice, the chain launched a Facebook group. The Leaf Raker Society bills itself as a safe place for pumpkins and year-round scarf wearers. But the group discussion is largely devoted to asking when PSLs come back. It usually makes its debut in late August or early September. According to some Starbucks employees in the group, the most likely date is August 28th. Reddit users have posted photos that supposedly show fresh supplies of sweet pumpkin sauce that have been delivered to stores. Employees say just because the sauce is in doesn't mean they can serve pumpkin spice. So please don't order it, at least not yet. All right, how about this story? As a father of two, Quebec resident Chris Webb had a clear message for his local Tim Hortons. It's 2018, dads change diapers. While at a Tim Hortons in Il Perot with his 14-month-old son, Webb found there was no changing table in the men's bathroom. When he asked an employee how he was supposed to change his son, he said they told him to use the women's bathroom. He said the experience was so awkward he took to Twitter. In a series of tweets to Tim Hortons, he wrote, I'm shocked and humiliated to have had to use the women's bathroom to change my child in one of your restaurants today. And he called for gender equality. Tim Hortons was quick to apologize to Webb and responded by saying the chain would make changing tables accessible in all of their bathrooms moving forward. Existing franchises will be refurbished to add changing tables within the next couple of years. But until then, Webb suggests maybe having a sign on the door to alert women that a man is in the bathroom using the changing table. Hey, a big victory for men on diaper duty. Top 30, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Top 30. NASA is searching for new planets, and it's already made a surprising discovery. Earlier this year, the space agency launched its Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS. It was carried into orbit on a rocket made by SpaceX. For the next two years, TESS will look for planets outside our solar system that haven't been discovered yet. The satellite will look at distant stars to see if they occasionally get less bright. That could indicate that a planet is passing in front of them. But to see if TESS could follow a moving object while remaining stable, it had to be tested. Here's video from that test. It's a comet flying by the satellite located 29 million miles from Earth. The other moving objects are asteroids. The ones that aren't moving are stars. The space agency says the test worked. One NASA official said, I look forward to the strange, fantastic worlds we're bound to discover. A sorority at Harvard would rather disband than let in boys. Last May, Harvard issued a new rule requiring all single-gender student groups to go co-ed or face extreme penalties, like forfeiting leadership positions on campus and opportunities for postgraduate fellowships. Harvard decided to impose the ultimatum following a university-wide report on campus sexual assault prevention. It found all male social clubs fostered deeply misogynistic attitudes, as well as the disturbing statistic that 47% of senior girls who've attended events hosted by these groups have experienced non-consensual sexual contact. The ban on single gender groups is meant to combat sexual assaults on campus, and while most groups chose to open up to all genders, others are fighting back. The Delta Gamma sorority at Harvard decided to close its chapter rather than admit boys. They said the ban paints with too broad a brush and punishes all female groups that are designed to provide safe spaces for women. Harvard's announcement comes at a time when universities across the country are dealing with an epidemic of sexual assault. According to a recent study by the Justice Department, one in five undergraduate women will experience some type of sexual assault while on campus. More Top 30 after this.
Welcome back. For centuries, men of the Kenyan Maasai people proved their skills by hunting wild lion. But as the lion population dwindled, the Maasai looked for other ways to prove their courage. Here's a preview of Tribe vs. Pride in this week's Nat Geo Minute. It's our job as warriors to create that barrier and to keep the peace. But it is always tense. Neither side wants to give ground. We are not afraid of lions. They are afraid of us. To see how the Maasai's traditions have changed, watch Tribe vs. Pride Friday at 8, 7 central on Nat Geo Wild. And that's it for today's show. Here's what's coming up on the next Top 30. A warning from healthcare officials could make you think twice about jumping in the pool this summer. Plus, what's in your pillows could help you get a good night's rest or keep you awake. And one mother is raising money for a good cause by running in 50 national parks. You can also listen to today's biggest stories on the Top 30 podcast. It's all coming up on the next Top 30.